Churches teach the doctrine of the Trinity. This is the belief that God is triune in nature, meaning that he exists as three persons, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, who are all co-equal and co-eternal. They claim that the second person of the Trinity, God the Son, took on flesh in the bodily form of Jesus. So, when Mary gave birth to Jesus, God is said to have entered into the creation as a human being. Jesus is said to possess two natures, a divine nature and a human nature. Hence, Jesus is believed to be both fully God and fully man. In this video, we are going to compare the Trinity to the Bible's teachings to see if the doctrine has scriptural backing. The Gospel of Matthew makes the following statement about God. But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Here we are told that only God the Father possesses knowledge of the hour. The Son is said to be ignorant of the hour. This means that the Son cannot be God, since God by definition has knowledge of all things. We can see that the doctrine of the Trinity crumbles in light of Scripture. An important fact to point out is that there are a number of ancient manuscripts, such as Washingtonianus and the Latin Vulgate, which omit the words, nor the Son. Perhaps these scribes were theologically motivated to delete the statement from the Bible because they felt so disturbed by its doctrinal implications on the Trinity. Let's now look at some common responses by Christian apologists to see how they resolve the problem posed by the Gospel of Matthew. There were certain things that were veiled. In fact, most scholars believe that there is a, a veiling of many of these things so that Jesus demonstrates for us, becomes the model for us as to how we are to depend upon the Holy Spirit the same way that the Son did. Whatever the reasons are, there are things that Jesus had before the incarnation, he has after the incarnation, but they are voluntarily, remember Philippians 2 says, he made himself of no reputation. Not he was made, but he made himself of no reputation. There are certain things that he does not act upon in the incarnate state, which would include, evidently, knowledge of the specific date of that final hour. In respect to Jesus' divine nature, he knows everything, even the dear hour. But remember, Jesus has a true human nature. And part of that nature, he has a human mind. And as a human being with a human nature, he has layers of consciousness. So in respect to his human consciousness, in his, in his human mind, in his waking human consciousness, he doesn't know everything, cannot know everything. Um, there is a nuanced approach to this. And based on the nuanced approach, um, the fact of saying Jesus should have known the last hour, I think is wrong, purely because the last hour hasn't been decided yet by God. Now, bringing that to Jesus' statement in Matthew 24, when Jesus said, No man knows the day or the hour, not the angels nor the Son, but the Father only, what he's saying is, no one has the prerogative to make that day known. In Jewish culture, when it came time for a son to go and get his bride, the right belonged to the father to declare that day to the people. The son couldn't tell people when that day was. And so all Jesus is doing in Matthew 24 is saying, I am the son, he is the father, it's his prerogative as the father to declare that day to men. We can summarize these different viewpoints as follows. Firstly, Knowledge of the hour was veiled from the Son for a specific purpose. Secondly, the Son knew the hour. It was only the human nature who did not and cannot have known the hour because of its limited capacity. Thirdly, the Son does not know the hour because the Father has not yet decided when it will be. Fourthly, the Son does have knowledge of the hour, but it's the right of the Father alone to announce it. Note the contradictory interpretations by these different Christian apologists. This goes to show just how troubling this verse is to Trinitarians. Putting the contradictions aside, the word translated into English as only comes from the Greek monos, which is defined as alone, without a companion. In the Gospel of Matthew, this word is used in relation to God the Father which means that it is he alone who possesses knowledge of the hour, thus excluding not only the Son, but also the Holy Spirit. 
This is fatal to the notion that the three persons of the Trinity are co-equal, since the Father is said to have more knowledge than the Son and Holy Spirit. Christian apologists try to get around this problem using mental gymnastics with the Greek. They reject the apparent meaning of the text and claim that it only excludes the Son and not the Holy Spirit. However, this response creates an even bigger problem. If one wants to argue that alone should not be interpreted literally, then consider the fact that the Gospel of John uses the same Greek to describe Jesus as the Son of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. The words translated into English as one and only is the same Greek that we covered earlier in the Gospel of Matthew. So, if anyone wants to argue that the Greek in Matthew should not be interpreted literally, then they must be consistent and accept that Jesus is not God's unique son. Trinitarians, choose your poison. Does God have many sons, or is the Holy Spirit ignorant of the hour? Either way, the Trinity is compromised from a scriptural perspective. So if Jesus is God, how do you not know about the hour or the day? Thank you. Um, yeah, and that, that's, I would say that's probably the, uh, the best verse to bring up if you were um, challenging the deity of Christ. Um, um, 